Hi, this is David Abanak Turtle. I was helping my sister evaluate an auto lease and I thought I would share what we learned about that because the lease calculations are interesting. So I've prepared this spreadsheet which you can download at the website and as usual inputs are in yellow. That means you can change all those and get the right answer. The point of this spreadsheet is if you're considering a lease, I wanted to be able to compute or verify the monthly payment on the lease. So that's right here under my hypothetical example. It all boils down to a monthly payment. And of course the dealerships or traditionally dealerships will emphasize the monthly payment. But we want to know how that's derived because we want to know the price we're paying for the car. We want to know the interest rate that we're paying on the lease. All of that can be understood. It's typically not enough just to negotiate a monthly payment because sometimes we don't know what the drivers of that are. Okay, so we start with the MSRP, Manufactured Subjected Retail Price. Um, so I've just got a hypothetical in here of 32000 And then a lease term, typically there's different, uh, different ways to go, different programs. You have 36 months or I've got a 48 month assumption in here. Now here's a piece we need, we need to evaluate the lease, we need to know the residual. We can know it in percentage terms or dollars terms because we could figure it out with one or the other. I've just got an assumption of 50% residual. And so you can see that 50% multiplied by the 32,000 gives us the $16,000 residual. Why does that matter? For two reasons. The residual under the lease is what we have, what we could buy the car for at the end of the lease term. We have an option, so we have the option, but not the uh, we have the right, but not the obligation to purchase this car at the end of 48 months for sixteen thousand dollars. So the residual is a market estimate of the resale value of the car in the future. Some cars would have greater resale value in the future. So you can see if we're thinking about buying this car at the end of the lease, we want the lowest residual possible, except for the second reason, which is that our lease pays for the depreciation. So the lower the residual, the more we're paying in depreciation or for the depreciation component of the lease. So if we don't want to buy the car, we really want the highest residual possible, but we definitely want to know the residual. Now here's the most negotiated item, what's called capitalized cost. Don't be thrown. It's just the price of the car. I know we're not buying it, we're leasing it, but it's still the price that we're paying. And in finance, we know we always want to know the price that we're paying for something. We cannot be, we cannot just rely on the monthly payment because we, without knowing about the price we're paying. So the capitalized cost, also called the cap cost, is the negotiated price. And we typically, unless that car is really in demand, we want that, that cap cost to be lower than the MSRP and as close as possible to the invoice cost to the dealer has. So I've just assumed here that we've negotiated 2000 off the MSRP down to 30000 and that's our capitalized cost. Minus any down payment would be our net cap cost or our cost after the down payment. Then the monthly lease payment is just a fun summation or sum of two components. It's the depreciation payment plus the interest payment. After all, leasing is financing and we should expect to pay interest. So the depreciation is pretty straightforward. If you notice this, all we do is we take the net cap cost. That's what we were paying for the car after our down payment minus the residual. So in other words, over the 48 months, we expect that difference in depreciation of the car. So here under this deal, over the 48 months or four years, we expect $14,000 in depreciation. We are gonna to have to pay for that. We're using the car in the meantime. So the depreciation component of our payment is simply that 14,000 divided by 48 months, or in this case, $291.67 that we're paying per month in depreciation to lease this car. Uh, if only that were the all of it, except that this is we're financing the lease and so we need to pay interest. And that gets us to the dreaded money factor. And in my opinion, we absolutely need to know this. It's not enough to um, for the dealer to tell us that it's complicated and that they don't understand themselves. We absolutely need to know it. I've got an assumption here of 0.0024. And here's the thing about this. 
don't listen to what uh, anyone else tells you about this. We heard a lot of different stories. You can just multiply this by 24 to get the interest rate that you're getting on the lease. See how I did that? Here's my money factor multiplied by 24. That means under these terms, it's pretty close to a deal, uh, at least that we were actually looking at, our, the interest rate here was 5.76. Now, I looked at this and what this turns out to be is this is equivalent to a nominal APR. So 5.65, we could also call it a stated annual rate. That means that I won't go into detail on this, uh, converting compound frequencies, but we can easily convert that into an effective APR. It's going to be a little bit higher. The 5.76 is going to correspond to an effective APR of 5.91. However, we can perfectly, it's perfectly valid to multiply that money factor by 24 to produce a nominal APR or stated annual interest rate. All that, all that means is that it's going to be a rate that's compounded monthly as opposed to annually, so effectively it's higher. So if we have the money factor, then we're going to be able to compute the interest portion. And note, this is a little bit, this one's a little tricky. It's going to be the residual plus the capitalized cost, the total of that multiplied by the money factor. See that formula here, residual plus capitalized cost. Some of those multiplied by the money factor is going to give us the interest portion of our monthly payment. And actually, it's a little bit of a hint as to why that money factor um, multiplies by 24. It's because of this summation here. We're really using interest rate off an average of the residual and the cap cost. But write me a note if you want more detail on, um, on, why, that, on why that money factor is 24. I'll be glad to try to answer that. But that gives us the interest portion. So notice we did the depreciation portion, we did the interest portion, and so we can get the monthly payment by adding those two together. In my example, the monthly payment is 40207. So in uh, generally, we're going to need to add the uh, tax onto uh, the monthly payment. In our case here in California, it's nine and three quarters, so it's another 3920 gets us the monthly payment on the lease. But the point of this again is to break it up so we understand that what we're paying monthly is a function of two components, the interest and the depreciation, because we want to know what our interest rate is because we want to make sure that we're not paying above market interest. And then the depreciation is largely, is going to be in part a function of that residual or resale value on the car. So we also want to know that. And then finally, just don't forget, with the lease, there's going to be an average, an annual mileage limit, typically. So there's something like 12,000 or 10,000 miles a year. And then above that, you'd have to pay per mile. So that can be very costly if you drive a lot. So absolutely make sure to check on what the average mileage limit is and what you pay if you go over that. And then, of course, my calculations here don't include the drive-off fees. Um, with the lease, you'll have to uh, typically pay the first payment. There's a bank fee, an acquisition fee, documentation fee. I also have that in the spreadsheet if you want to um, make sure you're not going too far above average on that. But hopefully that's helpful. This is David Harper, The Benedict Turtle. Thanks for your time.